Tesla is going to completely cease production of the Tesla Model Y in China for an entire week. Media are saying this is disastrous. Clearly, demand for the Model Y has gone through the floor. We're seeing the Chinese numbers. It was the second best-selling car in China, period. The world's biggest car market in November. We're seeing it kill the sales charts in Germany, in the UK, in Australia, uh, in France, in Norway. I mean, the list goes on. So who do you believe? The sales or the media? Well, here's what I think is happening. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back. Everyone else, thank you for tuning in and thank you for subscribing to the channel, supporting the channel. Obviously, if you're not into electric cars, electric mobility, new battery technology or renewable energy, this isn't the channel for you. I'm guessing you are, and that's why you're here. So make sure you give us a subscribe button, support the movement, support the movement towards having a better world. Tesla's a big part of that. Yeah, I know there's a lot of negative publicity. Don't let the media sway you. The truth is, there's only really two car companies in the world right now who are making millions of EVs. There is only two. It's BYD and Tesla. There's no one else doing it. So we need to support those two car companies, which is why on this channel, I often review what the media says. So let's have a look at what the media says, and then let's decide and work out if it is in fact true. Well, first of all, the media are saying, clearly demand for Tesla's vehicles in China is disastrous. That's what they're saying. They're saying that at the same time that Tesla just sold, in fact, over 60,000 vehicles in China in the month of November. and had the best-selling vehicle, the second best-selling vehicle in the country. The best-selling electric vehicle by a million miles wasn't even close. No one was even within 50%. So it's going actually very well when we look at the actual sales. Reuters, though, reported that Tesla will close down completely production of the Model Y and the assembly line between the 25th of December and the 1st of January. Now, that's according to an internal memo detailing the automaker's latest production plans reviewed by Reuters and two people with knowledge of the matter. It appears as though it is true they're going to do this. Now, you're probably thinking if you're in the West, oh, well, that's the Christmas period, but that's irrelevant. Sorry, <laughs> I lived in China for a while, lived in Taiwan. So all together between those two places, I've lived there for more than a year. And I can tell you now, they don't really celebrate Christmas. It's not really a thing. Now, yeah, there are some signs. There's some, you know, there's some companies trying to use it to sell products. But the truth is the general population, uh, they're not Christians. So they don't really care about Christmas. So that's not really the reason why they'd be shutting it down. The suspension of assembly at the end of the month would be part of a cut in plant production of 30% for the Model Y, Tesla's best-selling model at the Shanghai factory. Two people apparently told Reuters this. They won't say who they are as usual. The Shanghai factory, the most important manufacturing hub for Elon Musk's electric vehicle company. It's not Elon Musk's, it's the people's. Elon Musk owns a very small percentage of the company. Yeah, it's a it's the biggest percentage of any one individual, but it's still a small percentage. I think it's about 14%. But getting back to the point, Tesla's factory here in China. Did it shut down last Christmas break period? No, it didn't. Kept on producing. It didn't shut down for even a day. Tesla plant in Shanghai to shut down for the year-end holiday, which is well known, right? Most companies don't. Tesla haven't responded to a request for comment. As usual, I don't know why Reuters says that because Tesla never responds. Why should they? Imagine if Tesla actually spent time responding to all the media noise and nonsense. That'd be, that'd, it'd be a full-time job for about 50 people. It'd be ridiculous. So I agree with Tesla's decision not to respond. And if you disagree with that, then you just think that you should pay more for your car. I mean, the more staff you have doing things that are unnecessary, right? The more you pay for the product. That's just the facts. So I like Tesla's method. I like that they sell direct. I like that they don't do any marketing. I like that they don't have, to, don't have a PR department. All this leads to one thing. They invest more money into R&D and the products can therefore be cheaper. They can make high margins, reinvest that money into building more factories. To me, it makes sense. Reuters is saying Tesla is targeting production of just over 20,000 Model Y vehicles for the last three weeks of December combined including the week of suspended output, according to the memo. By contrast, Tesla has kept the output of the Model Y at a weekly rate of around 13,000 vehicles in November. That's equivalent to 40,000 vehicles over a three-week period. And it's not clear whether output of the Model 3 will be affected by the planned suspension of output of the Model Y in the last final week of the year. 
The Model Y represents the largest share of production at the Shanghai plant. Reuters actually reported on Monday that Tesla planned to cut December output of the Model Y at its Shanghai plant by more than 20% from November. A Tesla representative had said then that the news, which was first reported by Bloomberg, was fake news. False. Reuters could not determine the reason for the planned reduction in output at the Shanghai factory or the planned closure at year end because it's all hearsay and speculation and it hasn't come from Tesla. They didn't say that, but that's pretty clear. The company's China operations have grappled with elevated inventory levels, apparently, after the Shanghai plant completed an upgrade of manufacturing facilities in the summer, which enabled it to increase production from around 15,000 vehicles per week to 23,000 vehicles per week. That's a huge increase. And we can see that that is true. I reported on that a fair few months ago. We can see that that's true, that the facility now can produce about 100,000 vehicles per month. It shows you that the production of about 23,000 per week was approximately correct. Tesla added to its electric vehicle inventory in October at the fastest pace recorded for operations in Shanghai. And since then, Tesla has been cutting prices and offering incentives to buyers in China. It posted record sales for November in China, and on Wednesday, it offered a limited time discount of 860 US dollars to buyers in China on some models through the end of 2022. Now, I should point out that those that extra discount of $860 is just for inventory stock. I don't know how much inventory stock they have that they're selling at that price because nobody knows. Tesla delivered 100,300 China-made EVs in November, the highest monthly sales since its Shanghai factory opened in late 2020. It means the factory is capable now of producing around 1.2 million, possibly more, vehicles every year. And of those, 100,000 vehicles that were produced, more than 60% went to Chinese buyers. To give you some context, companies that sell premium electric cars, such as NIO, they're selling around 10,000 vehicles every month. 10,000 a month. Obviously, Tesla's rate now is at about six times that. Much, much bigger. While Beijing made significant relaxation to its zero COVID policy this week, an auto industry body said on Thursday that demand was weakening faster than expected and China's passenger vehicle sales fell for the first time in six months in November. The auto industry group said it expects sales to stay flat next year in the world's largest vehicle market, Tesla's largest behind the United States. But the thing is, this is baloney. The media have been saying all this stuff. You know what? Pretty much everything the media has said in the last four weeks in regards to China or Tesla has been proven to be categorically false. Why? The media said demand was going down. It was collapsed. Demand had collapsed in China. That's I can give you numerous places where they've used that kind of phraseology to explain what's going on in China. And then what happened? Well, we saw China's vehicle sales. We saw China's electric vehicle sales in particular for, for November. It completely disproved the media narrative. It, it, in fact, the media, they have zero credibility. And when I say zero, I mean minus zero. I mean, how much credibility do you think these, the media can still maintain after so many false reports? I don't know how these people can write this stuff, go home at night and sleep. How do you do this? Like, how do you, for a job, make up nonsense, get proven wrong, and just go, oh, I feel good about that. I feel good about myself doing that. I don't know. I don't understand that. I really don't. I struggle with this. Please, some of you, tell me, what's the key to being a person like that? How do you, how do you become that kind of person? And looking at Tesla's sales this year in China, you can clearly see from September onwards, Tesla has sold an insane number of vehicles in the country. In fact, they've actually sold three times as many cars in China in the final six months of the year versus the first six months. Three times as many. In fact, it's more than three times. Is that a demand issue? Um, I don't know, but I don't think so. When it comes to the best-selling premium vehicles in China, premium SUVs, well, Tesla sold an insane number in comparison to its all of its competition. 52,424 Model Ys were purchased by Chinese consumers and arrived to them or, or delivered to them in the month of November. Compare that with the second best seller in China, the BMW X3, with 12,632. So Tesla nearly sold, nearly delivered five times as many vehicles in the same segment category, not even EVs. We're talking just any 
premium SUVs in China, nearly five times as many as second place. Do you think the demand problem is with Tesla or is it with BMW or is it with Audi? Because they have sold even less than BMW or is it with Mercedes? Because they sold even less than Audi and BMW. You see my point? Or well, maybe you don't, so I'll continue. Is it with Lee Auto? Because actually they were further down the list than all of those brands I just listed with 9,000 deliveries of the pretty much only model they sell. Now I should point out they do have another model. They sold 5,000 of those, the Lee Auto Lee L8. So in total, Lee Auto delivered 14,000 vehicles in China for the entire month. They don't sell vehicles anywhere else in the world. So, you know, Lee Auto is seen as this amazing car company in China. Maybe they have a demand problem. Well, what about with Neo? The ES7, 4,900 of those were sold, meaning Tesla sold more than 10 times as many Model Ys as Neo sold ES7s. The ES7 is the direct competitor to the Tesla Model Y. And what about the actual electric vehicle sales in China? Are they going down the toilet like the media claims? They've been saying this now for weeks. Uh, the media doesn't like facts. What are the facts? Here are the facts. In the month of January of 2021, electric vehicle sales as a percentage of all vehicle sales in China were less than 7%. Less than 7%. They've now hit 35%. That's in less than two years. In less than two years, we're going from less than 7% to 35%. What about actual sales numbers? Because maybe I'm just talking percentages and maybe the Chinese car market is going down the toilet. Well, here we go. From January to November, Chinese new energy vehicle sales as a combination of plug-in hybrids and EVs, of course, EVs are about 85% of the market, so you can pretty much say this is EVs, were 6.1 million units, up 100% year on year, and accounting for 25% of all vehicle sales. Of course, as you can see, that's increasing. We're now hitting 35% market share. Among them, Electric vehicle sales were 4.75 million units, up 90% year on year. What about the actual sales numbers? Well, back in January of this year, 431,000 vehicles found new owners in China, which were electric cars. Majority were fully electric. Around 20% of those were plug-in hybrids. Fast forward to November, and we're looking at nearly double those sales. 786,000 new energy vehicles, meaning predominantly electric cars, found new owners, 786,000. The month before, it was 714,000. The month before that, 666,000. The month before that, 593,000. You can see here, there's a very clear growth trend. It's very clearly going upwards, not down. As the media are claiming, goodness me, the media's lies are just, they just know no bounds. They just know no, there's no shame whatsoever. So what's going on with Tesla? Is there a demand problem? Well, First of all, I think there's two issues here. One of them, Tesla needs more ships. There's not enough ships to send the cars around the world. You know how I know that? Because the wait times for Tesla Model Ys are still pretty long in many countries around the world. Now, Jose Pontes from Clean Technica would tell you otherwise. He believes that there's huge problems for demand for Tesla vehicles, but I'm gonna tell you, I think now there's a little bit of an agenda going on there, and I'm not convinced that that's correct because as Jose rightly points out, in his end of month sales data, Tesla is decimating the European car market. They're doing incredibly well. What about in America? Same story. What about in Australia? Same story. What about in, well, most countries around the world where you can buy an EV? Same story. Yes, I don't think demand is the issue. I think, yes, there's not enough carrier ships to send the EVs around the world, but I also believe something else is happening. If you pay in close attention to the company, You'll be aware of the fact that they're about to, well, more than likely, make some big technology changes. I've reported on those on the channel in the past, but if I go on about them on this video, you'll be bored to death. So I'll make a new video about these changes, when I think they're coming, but I think they're coming very soon. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.